Good morning. In contrast with King Josiah's death, how would Jehoiakim be remembered? We are at Jeremiah 22, verses 11 to 19. For thus says the Lord concerning Shalom, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, who reigned instead of Josiah his father, who went from this place, he shall not return here any more, but he shall die in the place where they have led him captive, and shall see his this land no more. Woe to him who builds his house by unrighteousness, and his chambers by injustice, who uses his neighbor's service without wages, and gives him nothing for his work, who says, I will build myself a wide house with spacious chambers, and cut out windows for it, paneling it with cedar, and painting it with vermilion. Shall you reign because you enclose yourself in cedar? Did not your father eat and drink, and do justice and righteousness? Then it was well with him. He judged the cause of the poor and needy. Then it was well. Was not this knowing me, says the Lord? Yet your eyes and your heart are for nothing but your covetousness, for shedding innocent blood and practicing oppression and violence. Therefore, thus says the Lord concerning Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, they shall not lament for him, saying, Alas, my brother, or alas, my sister. They shall not lament for him, saying, Alas, master, or alas, his glory. He shall be buried with the burial of a donkey, dragged and cast out beyond the gates of Jerusalem. Jeremiah's warning to Jehoiakim is, is pretty unsparing here. Whereas the death of his father Josiah saw great mourning and, and great respect, when Jehoiakim is off the throne and deceased, uh, the people are not going to be mourning about it. His reign has been terrible. It has been an awful thing for the kingdom. If Jehoiakim continues to be unfaithful, he's going to die in a distant land, and when he dies, it'll be with all the ceremony of throwing a donkey's head out in the town dump. This is a man of excesses, forced labor, trying to decorate the palace like all the other kingdoms with uh, the red color and the cedar, and, and he's really trying to live it up and make his wealth match the wealth of others. He's looking at these other pagan kings and trying to match them. Instead of remembering God, he's remembering himself, and uh, that's going to be a terrible outcome. You know, his corruption's no secret from God. God knows what's in his heart. And yet, and yet, God is doing, for, for this guy who's, who's about as popular as a donkey's head, God is pulling out the stops. He's sending his prophet. He's giving him another call to, to turn to him. God is a lot more patient and has a lot deeper love for us than we often think of him having. So he sends his prophet to wake him up. Wake up, Jehoiakim. And that's what the prophet's mission to us usually is. It's to wake us up. Some people, they don't want to hear the prophets. They're kind of lost in their dream. Even if their dream's a nightmare, they're stuck in it, and they, they don't want to be interrupted. They don't bother me. I'm doing just fine. They're not doing just fine, but, but they don't want to be bothered, and they're going to glide along a straight toward destruction. So God sends his servants, the prophets. Are we listening? And you know, the very fact that this message was sent to Jehoiakim tells us that it was not too late for Jehoiakim. He could have turned. God doesn't waste his prophet's time. He doesn't waste his own energies. The Bible is not full of extra pages added in uh, like it needs to be bigger. No, God knows that what's needed, and Jehoiakim could have turned, and God's spirit was even moving on him to turn. Sometimes we think we've gone too far, things are beyond hope, there's just, there's just no way for us to turn back to him. Don't think that way. God is calling to your heart and mine. It's not too late. We can, we can be his servants. We can still turn back to him if we've gone out away from him. Here he is searching for Jehoiakim's heart. So God really wants us in the kingdom. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, we are not the judges. You are the judge. Your spirit is searching and working and working on hearts, working on our hearts and working on the hearts of others. Help us not to feel that uh, different people are lost causes. That's not our business. Our business is to, to love and with kindness deliver your message. So Lord, may we do that May we be uh, your mouthpiece in these different settings you put us in. Help us, Lord, not to neglect persons, even persons that are rough on the exterior and seem like they're totally uh, a waste of energy. Lord, it may be you're calling us to help them. Show us what to do. Help us not to follow a bunch of rabbit trails. We don't want to do that. But Lord, you'll be our guide and our director. Thank you for hearing our prayer, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Don't forget, God loves us. He even loves people who behave a lot like a donkey's head. Let's remember that and not be slack in our soul winning. God be with you today.